TikTok this evening. Haven't done channeled and mediumship reads in a couple of weeks, I think, actually. Um, it is what it is. It is what it is. Whew. And I'm going to apparently drop all my cards. Thank you, thank you for the bunny ears. Um, yeah. Miss Lori Blair, I have first. Um, she was one that a few weeks ago I had to kind of pause. It was very odd. I've Like I've never had, well, I can't say never. It's been a while since I've had to do that. So Miss Lori, you are first. And then Shannon, you'll be next. Um, it has been a day where I've needed my glasses a lot. Like, I don't know, man. I'm already about done with all of this um, stupid electrical shit. Who else has been having? Um, who else has been having weird electrical issues either around their house? So I actually had to completely close the shop today and work from home because they turned off the electric to the building. To my building and the building next to me because they've been screwing with it. Um, they've been screwing with it. I, I don't know. I don't know. This is like, oh my God. For the last three weeks, at least one day a week, they've had the electric off. It's stupid. But the electrical issues, um, phone issues, internet issues, the weird dreams have been a thing. How many of y'all have had weird fucking dreams? Doorbell issues. Mm-hmm. One water heater, one garbage disposal. Holy shit. Your power went out in the middle of a meeting. Yeah, it's it's been... I don't like it. I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. All right, Miss Lori. The weird experiences. You know what? Here's what we're going to do. Because I don't really have to get up early in the morning. So after I'm done with these reads, we're going to have a chat. We gonna we gonna have some chats about experiences and weird dreams. We might do it in between, but Miss Lori, still see that circle around you. It's interesting. So I'm going to ask you this, Miss Lori, as I'm kind of shuffling and doing what I'm doing. Um, why do I feel like you've had a lot of dreams about blackness lately? Just black black. Um, oh, thank you, Brit. Um, so I'm going to say this because again, that circle is there, but this time there's a light in the middle. There's no one in the light. Um, I'm going to say this, Miss Lori. A, there's something on your path that's not being, either not being shown to you or you're blatantly ignoring it. Um, and when I say blatantly, please don't take that as like you're ignoring it on purpose. Sometimes we ignore things because we don't, we don't know we're ignoring them, but we're still actively ignoring. I hope, I hope that makes sense. Okay, thank you. I was hoping that somebody would step forward because... I need some answers, and I have a feeling you do too. So there's a really tall, big, broad-shouldered guy. I mean, he has, like, thick, dark, almost black hair, uh, full beard, mustache. Um, and when I say broad shoulders, I mean, like, he's a, he's a big dude. Um, he's making a joke about lumberjacks, about... Um, flannel shirts and it, et cetera. Like he's make he's joking about it. So apparently this was a joke or he got teased about the big shoulders, et cetera, a lot. 
because he's showing me himself like Paul Bunyan. Um, so, Lori, I forgot to even ask if you're if you're here. So for those of you guys that are on TikTok, know that I'm streaming live on YouTube so you guys can watch this at any time. There you are. There you are. Okay. So either there's a joke about his height or something. He's showing me literally like the flannel. He's showing me dressed like fucking Paul Bunyan. But the other thing he's showing me is having to stoop. Like having to duck through things. So I assume he's seriously, seriously tall. Um, he's showing me clovers. Like really, really bright green, freshly just boom. You know, in the springtime, like right now, for some reason everywhere they're humongous. Um, he's showing me that. I get the feeling he was really lucky. Like, he always had a lot of luck. Um, that that was totally redundant, dumbass. Why'd you say it that way? Um, he has, like, a gruff sense of humor, but he's really funny. He's showing me big, massive, really light tan work boots. So, okay. I'm trying to keep track of Lori's comments there. Um, so if one of my mods can help me kind of um, help me pin those. Um, he's showing me a lot of nature symbolatry right now. Pine trees, clovers, forest type paths, etc. cetera. Um, but I don't think these are memories i think these are i think it's a combination of memories and the fact that he really was connected to the outside and to trees and he felt at home in the forest he wanted me to mention the dog but he's showing me several different dogs like the dogs are like you know how in a movie you see the dogs like more from one dog to another dog? So I get the feeling that he always had a dog. So do you know who this is? I don't need a name. I just want to know if this, if this, if you know who this is. Um, like one dog he showed me has really long ears. One dog is this gorgeous like brown, brown, gray, silvery color. Um, okay. He's showing me the tan boots again, so, um, and I'm fucking freezing all of a sudden. Okay. I'm fucking freezing all of a sudden. Um, so when, when he hugged you, because here's what he just showed me, when he would hug somebody, you especially, it was like, you disappeared. Does that make sense? You know how when somebody is so humongous that when they hug you, it's like all you can see is just barely the top of your head, like right there? Thank you, honey. I really appreciate that. I kind of needed to hear that today. Even Bodies have days where they need to hear good things. Um, he showed me that. Like, he thought that was funny. I have a feeling that he really loved being as tall as he was, but at the same time... Um, I think he secretly didn't like it as well. Um, the other thing too, you never got to hug him. Okay. Um, what? Do you have a t-shirt or a handkerchief of his? He's showing me white cloth, but he's not showing it to me. Um, like I can only see a, a, a patch of it. I have a feeling it's a handkerchief because he's only showing me a patch. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. He's, okay, he showed me that. Then he also showed me, um, he also showed me a, a, a little wooden box and it's sitting like this, specifically like this. You have things his mom made again. Okay, um, he's showing me a little wooden box and for some reason it's like I'm seeing it on a dresser like this. I have a feeling that it's, 
Did she used to knit? Did she or not knit, but crochet? Did she used to make doilies? I want to make a joke and go, "What's in the box?" But I'm not gonna. Um, this is a beautiful crochet. Okay, this is a beautiful little multi-colored wood box, like just an old simple jewelry box. I have a feeling that the the jewelry box, whatever it's sitting on, or if you have what is sitting on. So when he's showing me the box, like I can see that there's a red cloth and then a white cloth. And since I can see through the white cloth, that's why I ask if it was like a doily or a lace piece because the box is on top of that, on top of this red cloth. Um, the box is important. He's not showing me... Um, you have a picture of him in your jewelry. Okay, so all of that makes sense. All right. Um, because I was going to say, I don't see any jewelry. He's not showing me any jewelry or anything like that. He showed... Okay, so this is like... Symbolically, it's not that he actually did this, okay? But he showed me steering you onto a right path. Just literally left versus right. He showed me steer, that he was like helping to steer you this way onto this path. He wants me to acknowledge this really intense like turn you've taken lately with your path. There's something on this left, the left path. Like you really wanted to go that way. Um, you really, really wanted to go that way. But he, he shifted you to turn you this way because that path is bright and glittery, but it's... So here's what he showed me. The path, like everything over here is bright and glittery and great, but the path goes here and then drops off. Like there's no way to get from there to there. You understood that for sure. Okay. He, he is very, very like visual with the things and I love that. Um, every time I start to channel or, you know, get the messages from him, and it's not just because my heater's on this side, but my whole left leg and this, like my whole left leg is like ice. Not left, right, excuse me. My whole right leg is like ice. Um, and I got something weird right here. Did he have a really bad back injury? I don't, I don't understand. It's not kidneys, it's not liver, it's not anything, but it's like my whole leg and all the way up here. So that that's either indicative of like a stroke that affected that side of the body or a really serious back injury. Um, because it's almost like I can't move my leg. Does that make sense? Um, I don't know if that makes sense to you or not. Um, for those of you guys, he was injured on the rail yard. Okay. All right. So that made sense. Okay. It was like he wants, he wants beyond a doubt for you to know that it's him. Okay. Okay. Is your mom still here? Because I need I need you to ask her a question. And for those of you guys asking about the last five of my spring reads, I will get you. She's not. Okay. Um, I will get you guys on Thursday. Y'all will be my first five on Thursday. Okay. The reason I ask is because here's what he showed me. And maybe you'll understand this. Maybe it is for you. I don't know. He literally showed me peeking over a crib and looking at a baby with really dark hair. He's not doing it physically, like him spiritually. He's checking on this baby, like repeatedly. So what I was going to ask is if you were sick as a baby or if you had issues as a baby. Because um, he's like, like a worried parent would check on a sick baby, if that makes sense. Like he's just, he just kept checking on this baby. So that's, um, that's why I asked that he would be in places where I was so he could see me even though they weren't together anymore. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Um, what's up with you? What's up with right here? Because he's acknowledged, he wants me to acknowledge this. 
I don't know if you've had really nasty sinus issues, if you've got a head, I don't know what's going on here. He was always checking in. Okay, so that, I was gonna say, I didn't think that it was like a baby of yours. I felt like it was you, but what's up with this? He's pointing like this. He's pointing to your right eye. I don't know what's up with this, but he's worried about it. Like he, he he's wanting me to acknowledge whatever this is with your eye. Um, I don't know if it's, you need to go have glasses checked or have your eye checked or what, but he, he keeps like pointing me like, like this. Um, so whatever that is, go get it checked. <laughs> whatever that is, you just had a doctor's visit with your eye. Okay. There's a special tie there. Um, there's like a super special tie there with him. Yeah, he's, he just wants you to keep an eye on it. Like, like a worried parent would, you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Like, he just wants you to keep an eye on it. So, but it's not like, oh my God, like that kind of worry. So when I tell you guys like, hey, they want me to acknowledge this, they're kind of worried about it. It's not super uber serious. Okay. He just wants me to acknowledge it. Okay. It's always the weirdest thing to feel something like that, like feeling cold all on this side. And then as soon as I acknowledge it, like it went away. Like it's the weirdest fucking feeling. Um, so he says he can hear you. So I don't know what that means to you because I, I, I almost wanted to ask if there was a question that you had for him. And as soon as I went to open my mouth to say that, I heard, you know, he can hear you. I can hear you. So I don't know if you talked to him or if you've been like thinking about talking to him or whatever, but um, he can hear you. He can hear you. So he also has like a super, super strong energy like he is really good at communicating as far as now I don't feel like he was so good at communicating when he was alive but he's really good at communicating now um did you buy a set of dowsing rods do you have a set of dowsing rods what is it he's showing me Like he's happy to communicate at any with anything at all. Like he's really happy to communicate. I get the feeling you were looking at some this weekend. Um, I mean, I would highly recommend it because that's what he just showed me was dowsing rods. Um, there's something karmically that he. It's a, It's almost like a need to help you, a push to help you, but not a panic. Does that make sense? Like he is supposed to help you with something. It's something, it's something that you keep rotating around. Like it's a circle, it's a cycle with you. And he's trying, he's wanting to help you with it this time. Um, I couldn't help you then, but I can help you now. And he showed me that, remember the path that I, I said, he steered you away from that side and because I had that drop off. He's showing me that golden city over there that you were trying to get to um, in a different way. Like he's showing me a different path to get there. So, um, I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. It's so funny. He said, call me, call him. Um, love, he is so eager to communicate with you. Um, he never wanted to give up your right, his rights to you. Okay. Yeah, he's... He's so eager to communicate with you. Yeah, he's he hasn't left. Like, he hasn't left. He hasn't left. So he backed up and he showed me that circle again with you in the middle. Um... I have a feeling that you had a very, very intense childhood and that you have a very um, intense gift that you probably shut off when you were like seven or eight. I have a feeling that is some of what he wants to help you with. Just just to be honest. And you are so welcome. So is this, is this your dad, I assume?
Thank you guys so much for sharing the live. I appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Miss Shannon, you'll be next, love. Hmm. So there were three young men that appeared um, like in a row, like laughing, joking. I, it's like I'm seeing, you know how they have those live live photos where it takes like a three second video, but I'm seeing these three men. I have a feeling that you either have this picture or you've seen this picture because it's in black and white. I would say this has to be, this has to be 40s or 50s, possibly early 60s, but it's three young men, all shirtless. The one in the middle has a white hat on. And they're like looking this way, like laughing, joking, their arms all around each other. And the one in the middle is wearing white pants and the other two, he's making me focus on the one in the middle. Okay, so I assume he's the one in the middle. With the white pants and the little white hat, I assume this is a Navy photo. He keeps pointing to the chest like this. He keeps pointing to the chest. And I don't know if this is because there's a tattoo or what. Um, oh, this is, this is, this is Shannon, Miss, Miss Luna. Um, your dad is absolutely ready to communicate with you. I'm just saying he is absolutely ready to communicate with you. So, um, no, you're, you're okay. You're okay. If you were looking at dowsing rods this weekend, I would invest in a pair because like I said, Luna, um, Miss Lori, he specifically showed me those. He's so ready to communicate and talk to you that, um, yeah, he's, so, he's beyond ready to talk to you. Yeah. Um, I went ahead and set up the event for next Tuesday for this because, uh, I, it, I just can't do 20 medium ships in an evening. It's overwhelming. So just, just saying, um, all right, Miss Miss Shannon. I love that. Mind over matter. Follow the live creator. Thank you for that. I it caught my eye because I was listening to that song earlier. Like I had it up. I was jamming. <laughs> All right, Miss Shannon. All right, so I get the feeling that this is a tattoo because I don't feel like it's a chest, a heart issue. I feel like it's, it's a tattoo or something. It's not very big. Just, it's just little bitty that or a, no, it's a tattoo. Cause I went to say it's a pendant and I got no ma'am. Um, okay. It's so funny. Um, he wanted me to acknowledge how everything is tied together. Everybody is connected. Everything is connected. I don't know if this is a lesson that you've learned like intensely right in your face lately or what, but he wanted me to acknowledge that. Um, he's showing me black rain boots, like old school black rain boots and, the, and squeaking them. Red brick house, white porch. No, brick porch, white pillars. There we go. Okay. Um, oh, okay. I see what he's acknowledging. Shannon, are you still here? 
I assume you probably are, and I just haven't seen your comments go by. Um, whatever it is that's happened to you lately that's kind of turned everything. So he showed me like a red bouncy ball, like a red and blue bouncy ball. And, it, and then he, t he showed it to me like this with the red on the bottom and the blue on the top, and then he flipped it. So whatever has been flipped in your life lately, um, I think that you're starting to see all the interconnections with everybody. He's bringing me back to that photo. Okay, okay. Because I can see him in the middle very clearly, but I can't see the two guys on the side. Okay. Um, I get the feeling that he either had dementia or Alzheimer's because he'll, this is, it's like symbolic when they show me this, um, because I'm like a visual person. I either need to see it or feel it. So what it feels like is like, um, like I'm focused on that photo and then all of a sudden my brain is fuzzy and then I get to focus on the photo and then my brain is fuzzy. So that's how I know that this is like dementia or Alzheimer's where I can kind of remember, but I can't. Um, hey, Anthony, how are you, sweetie? Long time no see. Um, he's showing me like snippets of little things like really quickly. So um, there's the railing on a hospital bed and then there's the, the porch again. I don't know if this is a back porch or a front porch. It's just an, a red brick house. And I feel like this is like a pretty long time ago, like 70s, 80s. But there's white pillars on the concrete porch. Um, he's showing me the railing again. So I don't know if you were there when he passed away or right before he passed away. Because I... Like, I can almost feel the railing under my hand, like, grabbing it like this. Um... He showed me like a big gold, like literally gold ear of corn, but I don't think this is a physical thing. I'm trying to decipher what that means. Like corn is abundance. Um, gold is obviously abundance. So I don't, I don't understand unless this is something, one of those brass things that everybody had hanging on their walls in like the seventies and eighties, but it's so funny. He, um, He wants to pop in and then like kind of fade back and then pop in and then fade back. Um, and he's drawing attention to that fading back a lot. And I, I know I've read for you a lot. I don't think I've read for you here recently though, but um, I feel like some of this is not just him that this is going on with. Are you having, are you having dizzy issues? Like not even so much like lightheaded issues, dizzy issues, not completely vertigo, not completely dizzy, but like this weird fuzzy head issues. Um, because he keeps acknowledging it. Okay. So it's almost like vertigo, but not. Okay. So you understand the feeling then? Because he keeps showing it and then pulling back and showing it and pulling it. It's so, it's the weirdest fucking feeling. He showed me a lady with, it's so funny. He showed me like the, the little normal old lady white puffball hair, but then he showed me her face really young with red lipstick. Not really any other makeup, just beautiful red lipstick. Um, so 
So whoever this is and whoever this woman is that he was married to, no matter how, how old she got, he always saw her like that. This beautiful face from when he, like he first met her with the red lipstick. He loves, loved the red lipstick. Um, okay. I need something else besides the photo because he showed me the photo again. So, okay, he showed me, I don't know what kind of flowers these are. They're pink, they have five petals, and the petals are kind of pointed. I don't know what kind of flowers those are. Um, he showed me those in a yard, like being picked. No, they're not lilies. They're little, they're little flowers, about like that. And they're they're almost like wildflowers. Maybe they're smaller than that. But they're almost like wildflowers. I don't know. I don't know if daffodils are are pink or not. These are a really, really pale pink. Oh, another solar flare, because yay. They very well might be cone flowers. Um, he's just showing me random things like he showed me flowers. He showed me like after you go fishing and you've got the fish laid out on the, the rock or whatever, like fixing to clean it. He showed me looking out over a lake. He showed me some, a couple. It's weird. Like I'm looking out over a lake and there's I can see the shore over there. There's like some really tall pine trees on the other side. Um... He showed me the boots again. He's, he, he keeps showing me fishing now. All right. He keeps showing me fishing now. So, I don't understand this. Where the lake is and where the, where the fishing is, he's showing me like... I thought it, that it might have been the side of a boat, but it's not. It's maybe the side of a cabin, but it's red. Like old faded wood red. Does any of this make sense to you, Shannon? So for those of you guys that are new to watching me, I've been doing this a long time. Um, and when I'm reading for one person, I it took me a while to learn how to do this, but I have, okay, it's not, okay. Um, I have learned how to make the others step back. Um, he keeps showing me this red wood plank. Is there someone in your family that would have the old family photos that would have photos because he keeps showing me this one photo and like I said if uh, I haven't said it in a while but a lot of times your grandma okay ask about a photo of of it's like a young man, I'm going to say probably 1920, 19 or 20, not 1920, 19 or 20. He's got two guys on either side of him. He's shirtless. There's something right here. I don't know what it is. I think it's a tattoo, but if so, it's little bitty. Um, but he has on white pants or at least a white belt. I'm pretty sure it's white pants and a, a white hat. Um, but... Also, there's a photo of a young lady that um, she's really, really beautiful. The only makeup she ever wore is bright red lipstick. Bright red lipstick. Like, I couldn't pull off this beautiful color of red. Um, I would ask her. I would ask her about this photo because the photo is important. He keeps bringing me back to the photo um, and the lake. All right. He's bringing me back to the lake again. The lake was important. 
I feel like this lake was up either somewhere up north because around it, like it's hills, like good sized hills. And his favorite time is like early morning with the fog kind of rolling around as the sun comes up. Yeah, I would absolutely, absolutely ask her about this. And then I absolutely want to know about this photo. <laughs> I want to know about this photo. Sometimes, guys, when people come through for you, your grandpa liked fishing on Lake Erie. Okay. Um, I don't understand what the red plank is. He showed it to me again. I thought, like I said, I thought that it was the side of an old boat, but I, I don't know. Um, the sass can tell you probably better than I can, but I've I've read for I've read for sass a long time ago. And she knew who this lady was or thought she did. And then uh, whenever I described a red suit, she was like, I don't remember that. And she said she had messaged and she was like, dude, as soon as I asked my mom about this woman, she said, oh, her in that damn red suit. So sometimes the message isn't even as much for you as it is for whoever it is you're going to ask about that person or that photo. So it may be that you go ask your grandma about this photo and she starts to tell you that she's been having dreams about him a lot lately or something like that. Um, so yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> so the homework is this, like if there's something like that that you don't understand and you have to go ask somebody else, um, we totally want to know, not just me, but like the mods, like we all want, we all get really invested in all this. What you guys don't understand is it's like when, when you do mediumship reads um, and you connect with somebody, even if you, you don't quite get their communication style or whatever, um, you get personally invested into the story. And so now I'm like, I want to know what the photo is. I want to know the context of the photo. And I want to know where this lake is because it's utterly gorgeous. And, like, I would totally sit out there on a foggy morning. I don't feel like he caught a lot of fish there. I feel like it was just every now and then he caught a fish. But that wasn't the point of going out there. <laughs> that wasn't the point of going out there. Um, so, yeah. There's red planks at Lake Erie to tie boats. What? Yeah, Shannon, you need to... I definitely want to know. You've got to go... You've got to go ask. Because he's just showing me this weird red plank. Thank you for pinning that because, yeah, I didn't see it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see it. So, yeah, Shannon, now, now we all want to know. We all want to know about this photo. <laughs> and the red planks. <laughs> Ask around and then let me know. Um, because... I don't feel like there's some really deep, big message there. It's more of like checking in. And I kind of get the feeling that no one has has heard from him in a while. I think that he used to communicate a lot and then suddenly just nothing. Um, and this is kind of like, hey, I'm back. So, because it's more of like a happy to be here type of thing. Not a, um, I'm worried about you. If, if, does that Does that make sense? Does that make sense? So for those of you guys asking about reads, um, you have to be on my list. If you want to get on my list, I think my list is probably full for this evening. But if you go to the link on my profile, yeah. I have been doing this a very, very long time. This is my job. It's not just, it's not just I get on here and I pull a card. I have been doing this professionally for over 10 years. Um, I know what I'm doing and I'm, I'm, I think, I hope I'm good at it. Um, I'm good at it, but yeah, just so you know. So it's really kind of, um, rude to come in and insist that somebody read your cards. Even if somebody is, even if somebody is offering free reads. Yeah, just saying, just saying what I'm saying. Miss Shannon, when you find that picture, I would love to see it. I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, that's funny, Ammo Cat. That's funny. Thank you for the boat, Froggy. I love that, especially as, um, yeah, as we were just talking about that. That's funny. That's funny shit. Yes, yes, yes. Please, please, please. <laughs> so, yeah. He showed me the boots again. I don't understand the boots. They're just black, black fishing boots. Like, not quite waders, like knee-high boots. So, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, it's uncomfortably quiet lately. I don't like it. I don't like it. Yeah, I gotta know about what the boots are too. So if, if she knows what the boots are, um, I need to know. I don't like this. Like, it's so fucking quiet. I don't, okay, all right. It is what it is. It is what it is. Miss Jean Marie. <laughs> Are you ready? beautiful slender lady in a blue dress okay so it's not quite baby blue like maybe a dusty blue but it's one of those dresses it has must be 80s because it's got shoulder pads um long long sleeves i have a feeling it's like satin or maybe knockoff satin or whatever but it's got the v like this it only came down to about here very conservative but nice fitted waist Pretty decently long skirt. I would say probably mid-calf. And she had pictures taken in this dress. Like she's showing me posing in this dress. Okay. I, I don't like this. It was really quiet. There have been some massive trucks driving through my neighborhood. I live right up the street, like a couple of blocks from our fire station. So they drive up and down through here sometimes, but they don't make that much noise. Like these are massive fucking trucks. I don't understand. I don't understand. But they're also doing a lot of construction around here and it's stupid. Um, anyway, all right. I love that. She kind of waited patiently for me to get finished with that. She's very polite, very proper. <laughs> I love that lady of masks. She's very polite, very proper, very sweet, very quiet. She's, so she's really beautiful. Um, she, I would say she absolutely has a heart-shaped face because she almost has like the po a pointed chin in a way. Like she has a very, very heart-shaped face, but it's kind of elongated. Um, really big, beautiful eyes, very straight nose. She, she makes me feel like she has long hair, but I get the feeling she lost her hair. So I don't know if that is her way of telling me that she had cancer because she showed me this. Okay. So, you know, when you look at something in a movie or whatever, or on the terrible filters here on TikTok, whenever it's supposed to put hair on you and it doesn't, um, and then it like, it's almost like superimposed over her. So I see her with no hair, but then with hair superimposed at the same time. And it's kind of a chestnut brown. Um, so Jean Marie, I don't know if you're here, but I, 
I don't know what this signifies either, but as soon as I was talking about the, um, the hair being, oh, there you are. Okay. Um, about the hair being superimposed over her, I got this weird pain right here. So is this, did she have, did she have a brain tumor? Does she have brain cancer? Or was it something that a, She just keeps showing me the superimposing the hair over. Okay. She really didn't. She was really upset to lose her hair. I, I, I totally, absolutely, 100% understand. Um, she had really tiny feet, didn't she? Stomach cancer. Okay. Did it affect... What, what was up with this? I don't understand. I mean, it was like this whole part right here just hurt like a motherfucker. Like all of this part of my face. And this is my left eye. Um, as soon as I acknowledged it, it went away. So I knew it wasn't mine. Okay. Yeah, the feet the feet thing, she, she thought that was funny, didn't she? Because what she showed me was her, she loved this blue dress. Whatever this blue dress is, she loved this blue dress. But she showed me her in the blue dress. And then with like little tiny Barbie doll feet, it was so funny. Like these, her feet just went, whoop, these little tiny Barbie doll feet. Like a joke, you know, is joking. Baby's feet and always cold. That's funny. Okay. Did she like dolls? She's showing me, okay, so she showed me like her feet being cute and tiny, but then she's showing me like porcelain doll feet, porcelain doll legs. Um, okay. She showed me the belt of the dress and then pointed to her stomach. And so, but I don't, but not in the, in a bad way. She really was a good cook, wasn't she? Because she pointed like this, like, let me feed you. Like, she pointed like that, like, let me feed you. Um, she, she tried to feed everybody as long as she could, didn't she? Okay. She fed everyone. Okay. She absolutely is that lady that she was going to get up out of bed and feed you. Okay. She is like the sweetest fucking energy person. Oh my God. She's so sweet. I, d I don't understand this. Was she kind of... Okay, so... She showed me herself laying in a bed and then getting up to help people. And then she showed me la laying on a couch and getting up to help people. And she was showing me herself laying in several different ways, like kind of propped up a little bit. But she, every single time she's showing me this, it's like in a movie where you see like a montage of someone getting up every single day. But she's showing me this. She just didn't want to let go. And so she just kept taking care of everybody because she felt like if she kept taking care of everybody that she wouldn't be able, she wouldn't be able to leave. Does that make sense? That if she just kept on, kept on, kept on, kept on. So she kept on literally right up till she couldn't. Okay. Okay. She literally is showing me like almost some, some Cupid doll aspects. It's so funny. Um, So, with, with her, why do I feel like there's a question that, hey, Daphne Pooh, I am doing good. How are you, sugar? Um, I feel like there's a question that's left unanswered when she left. Um, but I don't understand this. Maybe you will. Because I, when I was saying that there was a question that was left unanswered when she left, it's like I heard yes, but then there's this red, like it, it almost looks like a crystal tower like this, but it's not. It's, it's either ceramic or it's a box, but it's red. 
I don't understand. Maybe it's a candle. I don't know. I don't understand that either. It's like a weird little pillar with those tops on it. Um, it's a Christmas decoration. Do you have some of her Christmas decorations? I don't know if it's like the steeple on a little church is what I feel like it is. You know, like the little, the little towns people would put out. Like I used to hand paint them a long time ago, but it, it's like a little, I think it's a steeple. Um, I don't think the question is yours because when I mentioned that there was a question left from when she passed away, um, like I said, it was yes. And then, um, the, the little, whatever it is with the little red tower on it. Um, I don't know if this is your mom or your dad's mom. And if you can still ask them, but You might see if they've got, it's, it's a Christmas decoration. I don't know what she's, I feel like either it didn't get put out last year or something happened to it. It got, it got broken. Your dad's and he's gone now too. There's some, something happened to it. Like it didn't. Is she showing me popcorn? Why is she showing me popcorn? Popcorn on the couch watching TV. Okay. Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I don't know if that makes sense, but now I want popcorn. So thanks. I appreciate that. Uh, I have, actually haven't had popcorn in a while. She ate it every day. <laughs> okay. All right. So that was her way of solidifying who this is. Did you used to sit on the couch and watch shows with her? Any popcorn? Because she she made me feel like she was sitting there with a with a few people. Okay. Um, did you dream about that lately? Because she's showing me sitting sitting next to you and wanted me to acknowledge that it was that like it, that it's like a dream like a dream state so she visits you she visits you okay and it's always it's always sitting on the couch um so okay okay she's showing me sitting on the couch um but it's those, you know, those couches in the 70s and 80s, and they, they were like that rust color with the rust color flowers on them. This one didn't have the wood, but she keeps showing me this particular couch. The, the ones that they're soft but scratchy at the same time, they weren't the wicker feeling couches, but the terrible velour couches. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, she keeps showing me that. And like, I'm seeing her sitting with someone watching TV. Um, so I don't know if that made sense to you. Um, did I just miss? Yeah. I don't know if that made sense to you, but She's showing me that. So here's the thing. She visits a lot. Um, she never talks, but she visits a lot. She says, enjoy the show. Just enjoy the show. Okay. Oh, okay. 
Um, because, she, okay, so she showed me that again. Like, I'm watching behind the couch, watching them watch TV. Does that make sense? Like, I'm standing, she's showing me standing behind the couch, and they're sitting there watching TV. Um, so... I don't know how long your dad has been gone, but have you been worried about him? I get the feeling that you haven't heard from him. Because I think what she's trying to tell me is that that's every, everything's okay. I'm going to pick up all those cards I just dropped. Because she just keeps showing me that, that one scene. Okay, that one scene. All right. I would say he's probably processing something. Okay. I would I would say I would say that that he's probably processing something. Um everything's fine. So I wouldn't be surprised if you if you hear from him really soon because of this. Because I have a feeling like she's gonna push him just to check in with you. I'm sorry you haven't heard from him in a while. Oh, you would sit on the couch and watch TV. Okay. All right. So you understand what I'm seeing like from behind watching two people watch TV. Okay. I would not be surprised if you, if you hear from him here pretty quickly because I'm just saying, I'm just saying. So, all right, hold on a minute here. Pick up all the cogs that I just dropped everywhere. Whew. All right. And then I dropped more cards. How did I drop more cards? <laughs> what the hell? I need a new chair. I'm so sick of this thing being all cranky. Being all crankitated. <laughs> He'd always say his mom and dad were there. Got ya. They were. <laughs> like, he wasn't lying. He wasn't lying. So, yeah. I I really, um, I saw it, Sass. I, I know, I know who that is. It's okay. Um, so, yeah. He's always there. He just isn't communicating right now. Does that make sense? So, I absolutely would not be surprised, Jean. Um, and you need to let us know. So, because I, I'm betting that probably within the next week or so, there's some communication. He doesn't want to communicate. She did, but that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that may have been her roundabout way of saying like, hey, he's going to he's going to call you here this week, okay? She showed me the dress again. She really loved that dress. <laughs> I always love it when they're like, mention this again, like mention this again. It's so funny. It's so funny. Oh, of course my live will end because I'm not animated enough. Oh, Lord. Good Lord. Good Lord. <laughs> it's so cracking me up. Ugh. Yeah, that cracks me up. Miss, Miss Megan Kelly, you are next. She can make him do it. <laughs> okay, so she was buried in that dress. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, all right, Miss Megan. Woo, you have a lot of ladies around you. You have a lot of ladies around you. You've lost a couple of friends too. Okay. So we're gonna talk about that first because there's several, there's like six or seven ladies around you 
Um, and what they show me is like forming a line between you and this really bright light. And I don't understand that. Uh, almost like when you see people standing in car headlights is, is what I'm seeing. But it's like they are propping you up and pushing you forward. So first of all, I'm sorry that you've had to go through all of that shit that you've gone through. And second of all, they are so proud of you for moving forward. Um, there's two older ladies that both of them are showing them. They, they're standing with, the, with a couple of younger ladies. I can't see the ones on the end. But it's like there's two older ladies and then two younger ladies. The two younger ladies can't be more than 30. But the older two, they're showing themselves as 30, but they're not. They're... One has long, dark hair, like almost black hair. I don't mean like the blue-black, but like brown-black. Does that make sense? Um, I only see... I only see her from behind. I just see her hair. It's like long and straight. Like long and straight. It's beautiful. Um, like straight cut at the bottom too. I feel like I'm seeing her in like the late 60s, early 70s. Could be mid 60s. But like this is flower child haircut. Like straight bangs. Straight across the bottom. Okay. Um... The two younger ladies, they aren't ready to communicate yet. There's an element, there's a, not element, there's a feel of surprise with them. So I don't know if the, if one was an, I feel like one was an accident like this. Um, and the other one, I don't think she's processed yet either. Because there's this element of like shock, surprise kind of still. So, um. They wanted, the, the lady with the dark hair wanted me to acknowledge that, that they're not ready to talk yet, that it's, they're, they're still in that, that shock, I guess, of that. Um, but the lady with the long hair, with the dark hair, okay, I have a feeling she's going to be the one to talk, like, she's, <laughs> I'm not going to say pushy, because that's not the word, she's just extroverted, there we go, she's just extroverted, because the other two aren't ready. The lady over here, she's now showing me as older, much older. So I don't know if that is her mom or or what, but she's she's quiet and she's she's not talking. Okay. Is there some like southeastern European there? Is there some Romani there? Some Italian? What is it? Because they're show, I'm seeing some interesting images, um, and that's the first thing that came to my mind was that um, Italian. Okay. So the lady with the dark hair is cracking me up. Um, she's like, "Okay, back to me." <laughs> okay, back to me. Like she is super extroverted, and she's like pushy but funny about being pushy I feel like it would get really old really quick if she was doing it all the time but it's funny it's it's almost like a um a real housewives vibe kind of thing like she's just like okay back to me like let's talk about me now she is showing me these pants she wants me to talk about these fucking pants they're like tan cream colored beige I, I don't know if they're silk or what, but they're long, flowy, almost bell bottomy like pants and they have a thick waistband on them. I don't know if this is like one of her favorite pictures or what it is. I'm even catching myself talking louder. It's really funny. Does she talk loud? Because I'm, I'm like, bitch, you're yelling. Like, <laughs> stop talking so loud. Um, you don't hear from her a lot, do you? She's like almost overexcited to speak to you. She wants to talk about these fucking pants. <laughs> I really like her. I feel like I feel like if I got to sit and hang out with her in life, like we we probably would be the ones way too loud in the restaurant. Um, I love it. Okay. She's wanting me to acknowledge the red car. It's like a weird little red pointed front car 
I don't, I don't understand that. I hope you do. She's just wanting me to acknowledge the red car. So I don't know if this is like her car, your car, Barbie car, Hot Wheel. I don't know what it is, but she, it's, it's an older car. Okay. She also wants me to acknowledge the fact that it's the women talking to you. I don't know why, but she's like, I want you to point out that it's the women. I don't understand that, but like, she is like, women, like she's, ah! this is so funny. I really like her. She's fucking hilarious. She wants me to make sure to point out it's the women speaking to you right now. Um, that is funny as shit. Okay. She showed me a huge pink puffy heart. And I, it, it's almost like a stuffed, a stuffed animal thing. Like you get it ha at Halloween, at Valentine's Day. But it is like super pink fuzzy. Um... Aw, okay, Daniel. That's so sweet. Um, she got real quiet all of a sudden. So I get the feeling that when she got really quiet that um, usually something was wrong. So what's up? There's some there's something going on with you and your life that you're really worried about right now. Um, and I don't want you to say it out loud, but she's acknowledging that, all right, it's time to be serious now. And I mean, like brow wrinkled, time to be serious, not mad but like not mad but not worried what are we going to do about this um i'm just going to say exactly what i'm hearing okay let me say that way um concerned is a good word but it's a little stronger than concerned it's like ornery concerned um what are we going to do about this it's exactly what you think it is What do you need me to do? Like she stepped forward, like puffing her chest out. Like, what do you need me to do? Girl, don't piss her off. Holy shit. Your mom was not somebody you wanted mad at you. Like she is ready to like Superman punch somebody. Um, so... She showed me, I don't know if this is, um, you've been asking her to visit in her dreams. Okay. She showed me a, a golden bottle and it's a beautiful ornate. So I don't know if this is a perfume bottle or just an ornate decorative bottle. I, I, I don't, I don't understand, but that's what she showed me was this gold bottle. It's like, um, it's got a base on it about like this, and then it comes up and in, and it has this really ornate top. I, I don't know. Um, I don't think it's perfume. I think it's just an, a beautiful little ornate bottle. Um, she's, she's, she's ready to fight. Like, she's ready to full-on fight somebody right in their face for you right now. But in that like sneaky mom kind of way, like I'm not going to come at you actually in your face. This is a sneaky mom kind of way. Um, like Sopranos type of way, like that, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, she wants me to reiterate, it's exactly what you think it is. Girl, I don't know what you got serious going on over there, but I feel like I'm in the middle of a like cryptic mob conversation right now. Um, and I, like, I shouldn't really be privy to what she's saying to you. It's kind of like, okay, like I, I'm, I'm not listening. Um, 
She showed me these really pointed shoes. I don't know what that means. Um, I, I don't know what that means. Because uh, it, it's not as in like a personal power thing. But it's symbolic of something going on right now. So, I mean, it, it absolutely could be personal power. But I don't feel like that. These are these are like a maroon purple color. Like a maroony purple. And I get the feeling that they're fuzzy. Um, like velvet or something fuzzy. Not like fur. But, um... So... I, I I was trying to poke and see if I could get an answer of the best way that you can communicate with her. There's something, there's something standing in the way. So what she showed me was like a glass case between the two of you. Does that make sense? Um, I don't know if you've been like stressed out lately, if you've turned your gift off. I don't, I don't understand, but it, it's, it's literally like she's in a glass case. Like she's in a glass case and can't, Like y'all can, she can see you and hear you, but yeah. So she reiterated again, it's exactly what you think it is. So here's what I'm going to say. I don't know if you know what this bottle is or not, um, or if it's something you're supposed to find tomorrow or something like that. I don't know. Um, I would highly recommend, I would highly recommend, um, looking into some traditional Italian ways of cleansing a space. Something's, something is blocking that. Something is blocking it. Um, I will say this, that it's almost like, okay, your mom is fucking funny. Oh my God. She literally, she... You know the Superman movie where he locks Zod and whoever else in that big crystal and they're floating away in space? That's what she showed me. But it's not like she's being torn away from you. It's like funny. You know, I don't... She's fucking hilarious. Oh, my God. Okay. All right. She's funny. Um, but a lot of people have, have been having uh, problems with um, connecting with their ancestors lately. So... I would I would research some traditional Italian ways of cleansing a space. Connect back to like your DNA, your lineage, your ancestors. Um, that's gonna help you more than anything. But she's literally right there. Like she's right there. She hasn't left. She's right there. There's just a glass, like a glass case in between the two of you. Oh my God. She's like. Tell her that again. Tell her that one more time. It's exactly what you think it is. I don't understand that, but she wanted me to tell you one more time. <laughs> she wanted me to tell you one more time. So, yeah, I would absolutely cleanse every cleanse everything. And, um, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Absolutely. What's up? I mean, I can try to answer. I'm glad you muted because I was in the process of doing it too. <laughs> Y'all don't be rude. Don't pick on people. Don't be a, don't be a thing. Um, it's whatever the situation is that she's uber protective of you about whatever this is. Um, she made me feel like it's some gut feeling that you have, but you don't have proof of whatever that feeling is. You know what I mean? So it would be like if you su if you suspected that maybe you were going to get fired, but there was no real evidence of why you should get fired, um, and then you get fired. Does that does that make sense? Does that make sense? So if it's about a relationship, it would be like I think you're cheating on me, but I don't have any proof. Um, like that kind of feeling, okay? Because, yeah, it's almost like she can see it through the glass, but you can't see it yet, if that makes sense. It's whatever, 
She is ready. She's literally ready to like Superman punch somebody in the face for you, whatever the situation is. So if this person that you're in the relationship with has been picking on you or if there's things going on or like she is legit ready to like just flying Superman punch like that, that kind of, yeah, that kind of. So, Sass, I have two for Audrey Hart. Is that the one you were talking about? I'm glad that makes sense. I'm glad I could help. Oh, okay. So, there's Jason and then D, Danielle. Is that the one you're talking about? Good. I'm, I'm glad I could help in any way, shape, or form. Okay. All right. So, Audrey, I have two for you. I have a mediumship and a channeled. So, we're going to do the mediumship first. I'm going to make sure that... Are they both, are they both for you? Got you. Okay. All right. I don't know who the big tall guy in the red tie is, but he just came or stepping right on up. Okay. So this guy has like the barrel chest and a little bit of a rounded belly. I'm trying to be nice. Um, but he showed me in like a white dress, a white dress shirt. And at first it was, I thought it was a, a tie, but I think it's a bow tie, but it is bright red. Um, he is a bigger guy. And I'm having a hot flash and hot flashes are stupid. Um, he literally just came like whoop, stepping right up. Okay. I get the feeling that he's kind of a ginger because he showed me a little bit of a red tint to his beard. Um, he came in from the left. It was really weird. He just, whoop, like this. So, I get the feeling that he's a lefty. Okay, the stomach thing is a joke. It's funny. Um, so I don't know if he is always patting his belly or what. Because he showed it to me like a joke. Um, All right. He's showing me in like a form, like a formal suit. So either this is a, a wedding or this is what he was buried in. Because, yeah, every time I wear this shirt, I uh, that song is in my head all fucking day. You're welcome. Um, so. Yeah, he's literally a big ginger guy. He's showing me a bushy red beard. But he doesn't want to show me any here. I'm just seeing like from here down. Big, huge, tall guy. Big chest. Kind of big belly. That's all he wants to show me. Sir, I'm going to need something more than that. Because you just stepped right in like that. Are you married? Um, here's why I ask, because I don't think that you actually know this man. I think that he's trying to speak to a guy that's around you. And that's the reason I ask if you were married. Um, because him passing was an accident. Like, it was just, he's gone. Um, I don't understand what he's showing me, so I, I'm going to words it and see if... 
I think that whoever this message is for, whether it's your husband, a, a brother, a whatever, um, the last place they saw this man at was he was wearing this this suit. So either the, a funeral or a formal event. But what he showed me the picture of was like, um, like I can feel it. It's like crushed velvet, like an old Cadillac seat or something, but it's maroon. I don't, but he just showed me like a, a little piece of it. Like I can't see the whole seat. He showed me just a little piece. Um, he's showing me like Viking images, like himself dressed up as a Viking or something. So, uh, I have a feeling that that, that was kind of like a joke or he is like Scandinavian or whatever, but he's okay. So he showed me a pair of cowboy boots that are very pointed, like the toes almost curl up, not the crazy curl up, but they almost curl up a little bit. The toes are pointed. Uh, I'd say they're absolutely like alligator. Um, he's just showing me the right one though. Okay. All right. So let's have a chat for a minute because... Um, Lynn, Lynn, I really, really appreciate you pushing me up in the For You page, sweetheart. I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Um, he just showed me the right boot. What I think is interesting about that is because he only showed me a piece of the car seat, a piece of the, like, one, one boot. Um... There's also a sense of, I've got one hair tickling me on my arm right there. There's also a sense of like, there's an urgency and a, an underlying worry. You know, like when you have a really, really, um, a really good friend that they're trying to tell you something, but they, they're doing it in like a joking manner. Like that's what he's doing. So my question is going to be this. Um, that's not really a question. I feel like this is somebody who either knew, knew your husband, knew your, knew a brother, knew somebody like that. Um, but there was a, a reason that I asked if you were married. Um, there's something going on and he went like this. Okay. Um, there's an underlying worry here. Like he's worried about it. Okay. He's worried about it. So I don't know if there is something up with your husband or if you have a brother or something's up with your brother. I really feel like it's, I really feel like it's somebody you're romantically linked to. So, um, because I get the feeling of like, I've tried to point it out to him. He's not listening to me. So now I'm coming to you. Does that make sense? So don't let that slide and don't let him poo poo that, you know, like, eh, I'm fine. Don't, don't let that be a thing. To let that be a thing. Um, yeah, don't let that be a thing. The The other thing is this, like, there's not much else to what he's wanting to say beside those few things. So even though I was like, okay, let me do your mediumship read first, in a way I almost feel like that was a channeled read because that was him like, hey, this is an issue like, don't let this go. So, hey, Sass, would you, would you remind me to shoot Audrey a message whenever I get off the live? Please. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah.
Well, I'm going to message you about it afterwards. Um, I'm going to message you about it afterwards because, yeah. I, I mean, it's nothing like, oh my God, you know, or whatever. And it's nothing to like be really, really worried about. But, um, yeah. It's one of those best friend things. Like, you can't lie to me. You know, like I see through your shit. Like you can't, like that kind of feeling. So I just want to, I'll message you about it. Um, but yeah, he was a little insistent. He was waiting patiently and he was a little insistent about that. He showed me the cat, the car again, the, the, that Cadillac seat or whatever. Maybe it's a Lincoln. I don't know, but it's an old school, like velour kind of seat. Um, so yeah. So, there's, there's also, there's a lady, she's really quiet, um, and she's not wanting to show me what she looks like, but she showed me this, like, baby blue bunny stuffed animal with white ears and this really bright pink red nose. Um, like like a peace offering, like here's this. So this lady in particular, there's something interesting about her passing and I'm just gonna say it that way um, because she doesn't wanna talk about it. I don't know if this is still a point of contention around you, but, or or her in general, but she, she doesn't want to acknowledge it. She doesn't want to talk about it. So I don't know if this was an accident or whatever, but it was something that was like a shock. And she is, okay, I was told she's done talking about it. Okay. All right, she's blonde. Okay. She has really, really beautiful curly hair. She showed me Bernadette Peters. That's so funny. Like that kind of blonde curls. If you guys don't know who Bernadette Peters is, she is the uh, lady who played in The Jerk. Oh, really? I didn't even catch that. Damn. And I can't go up there and see. Okay. Apparently, I'm going to have to spend some time and go through and block all of the uh, blue bodies. So... She's also back here on this side, like the left. She's just barely kind of peeking over. She's really quiet. She's really quiet. Um, really shy. Let me say it that way. She's shy. Um, she's she's older. She's older. I get the feeling that she's. I, she keeps giving me the number three. Um, I don't think she's been gone three years, but she keeps giving me the number three. Um, it's, I feel like she's older as in like probably was 70s, 80s, in the 80s. But either, either her death was super quick or, well, there wasn't an or, it was super quick. Because I think she's just now kind of coming to terms that that's a thing. She's just now processing through that. Um, oh, I love that. Thank, I'm glad I could help you in, in any way, love. Um, in life, she didn't really communicate very well because she was really, really shy. And she didn't like confrontation. And she doesn't want to speak up. And she doesn't want to hurt anybody's feelings. So now that she's gone and she's... Finally, to the point where she wants to kind of communicate. Um, you are so welcome, love. She uh, she doesn't understand. It's so funny. I almost said she doesn't understand how to. And then I saw radio knobs like this. I saw radio knobs like this. Okay. 
Okay. Um, so here's, so here's the, um, thing she showed me and let's, let's, um, let me, let me say it this way. She showed me this dial and I don't feel like you've been having issues with the back of your head, but it's like she's trying to fine tune. Um, she's trying to fine tune talking to you in particular. She wanted me to acknowledge you hitting your head and I don't understand what that means. She also wanted me to acknowledge that um, She wanted me to acknowledge talking, but not talking. Okay. She wanted me to acknowledge you talking, but not talking. She's like cryptic when she speaks and I don't. She talks kind of like I do when I'm trying to give somebody all of the information I can without giving them the whole shebang, if that makes sense. Um, but she keeps showing me blue and white, blue and white, blue and white, like something blue, like a blue sweater or something with a white turtleneck, but it's got lace on it. That's the only thing I can liken it to. Um, she, um, she's trying to turn the dial up so you can hear her. Okay, I got it. I got it. Okay, now she's showing me sweaters. She just showed me a red v-neck sweater, a bright red v-neck sweater. Christmas time, okay. Bright red sweater, white pants. Okay. She's very fashionable. She wants me to acknowledge that. She felt she was very fashionable. Um, she did buy nicer clothes. Like back in the day when Dillard's and Pennies were like the big deals. Um, I really feel like she passed away in the 80s. I really feel like she passed away in the 80s, mid mid to late 80s. Um, yeah, I was going to say possibly early 90s, but I don't think so. I think late 80s at the latest. She keeps showing me Christmas, and she keeps showing me, like, a really tall, slim Christmas tree, family photo, um... in a really nice place. I don't know if this was a place. I don't, it's not a family, um, not a family place. You know what I mean? Like you didn't go to her house to take this picture. She didn't come to your house, to take the picture. This is either out eating somewhere. It's almost like a lodge. Hmm. Okay. I know I probably missed some comments. Let's see. Um, will, will you guys pin the person that I'm talking to so that way I can see it if I look down the missing? Um, okay, she showed me a cigarette and a wine glass. So apparently she did smoke and drink a little bit. I find it really funny, like everything she's showing me is not somebody that would be really shy, but she is, she, she, maybe she's just shy with me. I don't know, but she's, she's just shy, but she wants me to acknowledge again, the communication barrier and that I'm trying, I'm trying. Um, I also get the feeling that maybe you did not know her very well, that it was, you only knew her for a few years before she passed away. She showed me that red sweater again. I don't understand 
I mean, it's a beautiful V-neck red sweater, kind of fuzzy. Very elegant. Very, It looked very pretty on her. So I'm getting the feeling that Christmas was the last time that either you were around her or whoever it is you're going to speak to about this was around her. Um, and apparently she was very proud of this sweater. And she just said something about February. Not this February, but February after that Christmas. I have a feeling that's when she was diagnosed with whatever it is she was diagnosed with. Because I don't feel like this is an accident, like a car accident or things like that. It was just a very quick departure. Does that make sense? Just a very quick departure. So I have a feeling that she got diagnosed with something and she wasn't here very much longer. Just a few... Um, other than you need to be hitting the head occasionally. That's, that's okay, that's funny. Um, okay. Yeah, I'll message you here in a little bit. You're pretty positive you know who I'm talking about? Okay. Um, I don't think you knew her very well. And, and what's funny is... She's tied to you in some way. It's like a favorite aunt type of feel. It's not someone that's like um, you're super close to you. You knew everything about them. Um, but there is something there. The two of you, she is tied to you. Let me say it that way. She is tied to you. Yeah, I'll, I'll message you here in a little bit. Okay. Okay. Did she have blonde curly hair? Like almost perfect curls every time you saw her? Because she wanted me to acknowledge that again. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to message you. I'm going to message you here in a little bit about these things. So, yeah. Not all the time. Not all the time, Kay. So, yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. It took her a minute to get there because she was she was really shy. Like she didn't want to she didn't really want to start talking to me yet. And and I get that. I get that. Woo! You didn't see that. Seen and not heard generation. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Well, I will message you whenever I get done with these because we need to talk about the boots and stuff like that with that, that man that came through first. So, so yeah. Yeah, we're going to, we're going to chat later. <laughs> we're going to chat later. Woo. And then I'm apparently going to throw my cards again because yeah. All right. when I see that both of you like several of my mods do the same thing that cracks me up Miss Audrey I'll message you here in a little bit okay so I'm gonna give you guys the my list okay um because if I have to keep stopping and answering questions then it's gonna be really long and I'm gonna have to finish this tomorrow and I don't want to do that. So Jason, Christina, a special one, Carrie, Christy, Megan, Jeff, Melanie, Alicia, Chelsea, Megan, Shree, 
Rebecca, Becca, excuse me, and Ginger is who I have on my list currently. And I'll refresh here in just a minute. My feet are cold, but the rest of me is not. But the rest of me is not. All right. All right, Jason. So if you guys miss yours, no problem. Um, I am streaming this live on YouTube as well. So you can go and watch it here in just a little bit. Um, Sass, would you check on those for me and see what's going on? I think there are a couple that are in, um, like a hold. I don't know what's going on because I know it says that my list is full, but I've only got like a certain number on there. So yeah. All right. Jason, you ready? I started kind of trying to pull whoever it is around you. Uh, there's a man in white. <laughs> it's so funny. I, I I'm not trying to make a joke of it, but but it's it's kind of comical sometimes how they show themselves. But it's like he's got on this long robe that's like straight, like straight down like this, just like boop, boop. It's so funny. Um, but he has really long hair and it's pulled back in a braid in the back. Very straight, very tight woven braid, but he doesn't want to show me his face. What he does want to show me on his face are like the real deep, deep wrinkles you know when somebody has been out in the sun a lot when they smiled a lot you know they had those those deep deep wrinkles um he's he's old and i don't mean that in a bad way but i i would say that when he passed away he had to at least have been in his upper 80s if not early 90s and uh i don't know that this man ever smiled I also am not sure that you ever, I was going to say, I'm not sure that you ever met him in person, but I, I think you did a few times. Um, he's showing me himself like superimposed on himself like this, where like he's showing me himself older, but young at the same time. So like, even though he's showing me the deep wrinkles in his face and stuff, his hair is like dark, dark, like it, there's no gray in it. Um, but he keeps showing me himself in this beautiful white bell-shaped outfit. It's not really a gown because it doesn't move. He's always standing behind you, like right here, right here to your right, too. Just watching. He showed me a coyote. Um... He showed me the coyote like walking up like this, like walking straight up, just like very calm and cautious walking straight up. Oh, he's going to be cryptic. Okay. All right. I got you, sir. Let's go. Bring it. Okay. So here's what he's showing me. He's showing me himself standing behind you to the right over there, the white gown. Um, he has like a golden light behind him and he's got the coyote walking up. So as the coyote walks up, the coyote gets bigger, but the head, its, its head is down like it's 
submitting, but not, you know what I mean? Like kind of bowing in a way. Um, and it's funny, I'm in, it, I'm in this big white room and it's, it's a big circle, big white circle. Um, okay. Your dreams have been weird as fuck lately. Okay. This is almost like, um, visions. Boy, you're gonna make me talk to your mom. Shit. All right. Um, So this is like some really intense imagery, intense imagery words, because standing in this white circular room with him behind you and showing you this, um, coyotes represent a couple of different things, especially with different tribes. Um, coyotes can represent a trickster spirit, but they also rec re recommend, represent the pack. The pack mentality of protecting each other, um, you know, protecting each other, caring for each other, etc. But in this aspect too, the coyote, because they're they're scavengers in a way, they kind of walk both sides of the realm. Um, so He just keeps showing me this room, this white room. Okay, I've seen the white room. Like, I'm good. Okay, thank you. So, there's a cardinal that... Like, he's very, very clear with the with what he shows me, with the visions, etc., which I fully appreciate, but I'm like, all right, I've already wordsed all of this. So, he showed me a cardinal come in. The cardinal is sitting on his shoulder right there. For some reason, your back is to him. He's still right here. Um, there's also a woman with him that's much shorter. You have never met this woman. Um, and she doesn't want to show me what she looks like. She's just there. She's much shorter. Okay, what is it that's hereditary that's going on with you? Like there's something that came from the paternal side of the family. And it's like almost every single male in your family this affects. It's not something bad. It's just, it's just he wants me to acknowledge the, um, I keep wanting to talk like this with my hands whenever I'm, I'm talking to him. Here's what he's, here's what I keep doing. Kind of what I keep wanting to do is this and then this, like I keep wanting to like point here, clear it down. And then like that, I don't know what that means, but he's wanting me to acknowledge something that's hereditary that that's all, all it's on the paternal side over there. You also, um, he's also wanting me to acknowledge that you, you look a lot like, I don't know if it's, if it's him in particular, but you look a lot like several other people in your family line. It's almost like it skips and it skips and it skips. So it's like every other person looks almost like the same, like, oh my God, you look just like your grandpa. You look just like your grandpa. You look just like your grandpa. If that makes sense. Um, but so the cardinal usually represents ancestors when it comes up like he is very firm and very matter of fact he doesn't want to talk about anything but what we're talking about with the room and the coyote and the light oh all right <laughs> okay, thank you. He wants me to acknowledge um, this weird streak of luck 
lately, this weird streak of luck lately. And, and it's, for some reason, he's wanting me to acknowledge is on the right side. Like, oh, I noticed this and I bent down and missed this. Or, oh, I noticed this, so I walked over here and met X, XYZ or saw XYZ. Um, he keeps wanting me to acknowledge it. Everything is happening on the right, which I don't understand, but okay. He keeps wanting me to acknowledge it. The other thing he wants me to acknowledge is... Um, Stay in the light. Like, he doesn't really want to leave the room, if that makes sense. He doesn't really want to leave the room. Um, I don't know. Maybe coyotes do eat trolls. I'm just saying. But, um... I haven't been watching the chat, so I haven't been able to see what you've been saying about it. But, like, he is super, super clear on this room and everything. Um, Danielle, are you here watching? I thought I saw you pop in a while ago. No, no, Danielle. Danielle J. Okay, there we go. Okay, you have no clue who it is? Okay, got ya. Um, okay. Um, I've got to talk to you, like, tomorrow anyway, Danielle. So, I'm going to call you. If you're free tomorrow. Danielle's a friend of mine, so y'all don't freak out about that. <laughs> I've known Danielle for a little bit because, um, I, I don't know. Um, I need to ask you, like, some questions family-wise about some stuff, and that's not something that needs to go in the, in a chat right here. Um, so, so yeah, but because it's, he keeps showing me the coyote aspect and there's a lot that goes with, with the coyote and I can't remember, I can't remember what, um, what tribe your husband belongs to, what, what that side of the family is. Um, so forget, forgive me for that. I can't remember, but, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Why you guys got to have all the stuff where I got to remember to call you and shit later and message you and, okay, let's talk about this guy, this guy, and this guy. But, yeah. <laughs> Mods won't flip my butt. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Yeah, I'll give you a call. I'll give you a call tomorrow, Daniel. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. I don't know who this man is, but he is super, super tied to Jason. He is super, super tied to Jason. Um, we just, we just need to chat. Okay. We just need to chat. So, yeah. And I blocked a lot of my schedule out tomorrow for a reason. So apparently this is why now, since now I got two of you guys, I got a call. I got to talk to you tomorrow. So, yeah, we're just going to chat tomorrow. All right. And the other ones, the other ones for you or is that the, uh, the gift? All right, Miss Kami. This thing keeps like, I have it on rotate and it doesn't want to rotate. 
I'd like you to rotate, man. I'm gonna burn a hole in my leg. Aw. That's so sweet, Danielle. You got it. You got it. All right, Miss Kami. Hmm. Woo! You didn't see that. You didn't see anything. I saw that you were here, sugar. How are you? How are you feeling? Well, I started to see a lady and then I saw like black heels, black, they're not crazy high heels, it's black, black heels. Like I, I have a pair of shoes that I call like my power heels because they are loud. They are so loud. Like you can hear me coming. That's, that's the kind of shoes I just saw. Um, I feel like this is somebody that in life you were a little bit afraid of, like they were she didn't really smile and she wasn't really super loving. Okay. Because when I'm hearing her walk, walk towards me, like down the hallway, it's almost like this interior panic a little bit. Like, you know, oh my God, is my room clean enough? Is this clean enough? Is this good enough? Is this good enough? Um, She's really kind of stern. All right. So she thinks of herself as I'm going to say this and hopefully she doesn't get mad and leave, but it's like the fashionista, like way more than she really was. Um, because what she showed me was herself walking down the walking down the hallway to this room with this black hat and you know what I mean like yeah she sees herself her life as having been like a movie like a theater you know like a theatrical production um she's really not very nice she's not very nice she wasn't nice in life let me say that Everything was all about her, and she, um, yeah, everything's all about her. Um, you know those paintings from the 80s of, like, the lady with the dark hair, and it was very, like, the lady was perfect, but it was very abstract, like, pink and white behind her. I can't remember the artist of that, but the lady always had, like, black hair and, like, red lips and stuff. Um... She sees herself like that. She's showing me herself probably mid 40s, I would say, upper 30s to mid 40s. Um, she's she keeps showing me this big black hat. Nagel, that's it. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Y'all know those ones? Um, but she keeps showing me this big black hat. Hat, not cat. She's showing me like um, the movie, uh, like the old 101 Dalmatians like the kind of Cruella de Vil there. But the other thing, um, she just wants me to showing herself in this doorway. So when they do this, it's like an acknowledgement of like, look at my personal power. Like that's what she's wanting me to acknowledge. So there you go. I acknowledge it. Um, she really isn't a nice person. I don't feel like 
she's somebody that you knew very well. And I don't feel like she's somebody that you had a good relationship. I also feel like this is somebody maybe you were only around a few times. Um, and there is a karmic tie here in some way, shape, or form. Because this is not how she looked in real life. She's just showing me this. Like, this is how she felt she looked. She was very, you know particular about her makeup her hair everything she does have dark hair um like really really dark dark brown and she did always keep it in a ponytail or slick back somehow i think she probably was around like five six or five seven she felt like she was really really tall and she did like to wear heels Yeah, there's a karmic tie here somewhere. Um, this is some place that you used to go as a kid where she was. And even though as a kid you were a little intimidated by her, a little scared of her, etc., um, I don't... I don't understand what this tie is. I don't understand what this karmic tie is with her, but she keeps showing me walking down this marble hallway and I don't understand. Like I've acknowledged it, I've told you, and she just won't stop with it. I don't. Okay. So. When you were a kid, I feel like this is a teacher. I feel like this is a teacher because she, um, she just gives that I know more than you do vibe. The other thing too is because this is not someone that you saw very often. So if, it's a, if this is a teacher, this is somebody that maybe you weren't directly in their class or she filled in every now and then or she was an administrator or something. But this is, this is somebody that most of the people that were around you, around her, they were very intimidated by her and a little bit afraid of her in general. Um, because there's always this, when I hear her walking down the hallway, like she loved this aspect of it, walking down the hallway and knowing everybody could hear her coming and like scrambling because, oh my God, you know, is this clean? Is that clean? Is this perfect? Is that perfect? Um, so whatever this tie is here. It's to push you in some way. She pushed you specifically when you were younger, mentally, not physically, you know, things like that. She pushed you mentally and she made you want to do something different. And she's trying to do that again now. And there's only like a handful, but you saw her a lot. Did she try to intimidate you? That she just keeps showing me the marble floor and coming up to what I feel like is a room where you're sitting on the floor and you hear her coming and it's like, oh shit, oh shit. Like, I gotta pick this up and pick that up. Like you were scrambling really quickly to like get, get things cleaned up. Um, she, um, She really pushed you to do something. That That's what I keep getting. Like, she's proud of pushing you to do something different. And she's trying to push you to do it now. Like, not that same thing, but like push you in that way again now. Which is why you've had a lot of things pop up for you lately. Um, let's see if I can word this correctly. Because I don't even think it's dreams. I think there's been a lot of things that have popped up around you that have reminded you of times when you've been afraid in the past. And some of those things have popped up enough that it's made you kind of stop and stand still and look around. It's made you backtrack a little bit. It's made you think, do I really want to go through with this or drive here or whatever? Um, 
there's just a lot of things that have caused you to pause lately and she's trying to push you forward. She showed me like this weird, you know, the big plastic pylons on the road. They, they used to have a lot of plastic ones. Now they're more concrete, but like the dividers, this is like bright yellow. I don't, I don't understand. It's not yellow, bright orange. Um, It's like she's trying to push you up and over that because right now you keep getting stuck against it. You get stuck and you back up and then you get stuck and you back up. Even though she wasn't very nice to you when she was here when you were younger. Um, she's just not a nice person. She like prided herself on being that way. You weren't the only kid that she that she did stuff like this too, like this intimidation aspect. Um, and it's a learned thing from her dad of, of how to motivate somebody to do something. So she's done it her whole life, basically. Uh, the other thing is this. She's trying to do it again to get you pushed over this, over this hump. Um, so this is why a lot of things that have been terrifying you have been popping up. Um, I wasn't breathing. A lot of things that have caused you to pause in the past are still popping up. Even though you were like, I thought I was over this. I thought I healed from this. This shouldn't be a thing anymore. Um, they're popping up again on purpose. There's, let me say this. Or I'm trying to, try me try to explain it another way because I'm not wordsing it correctly. So we all have people that come around us in life and we have spirit guides after they pass away that um, they may not be the nicest people. They push us to do something. They push us to get somewhere. I feel like there's something that lately either you've kind of fallen off the spiritual wagon a little bit or something's going on. Um, she showed me walking down this fucking hallway again. Oh my God, stop it. But sometimes these spirit guides and these people that are in our path, they have to be mean to us to push us to be better, to push us to do something different. It's like a choice in the moment. Either we're going to do something different or we're going to just kind of sit down and take it. Does that make sense? And I have a feeling that it took a bit, but you finally like stood up and was like, I'm not doing this for you anymore. Um... There's a lot of kids that are involved, not in a mean, not in like a physical way, but like she, she was a teacher of some sort. She was a teacher or she was around you. Um, yeah. In that aspect. So. Do you have any idea who this is? She's just a very interesting character. Let's just say that. I don't think in life she actually was physically mean to anybody. And I think that she only was this way too. Because A, it's the way she grew up learning how to be. Um, and B, it's just her way of coping with things. So maybe this will help because she wanted, she wanted me to talk about her dad. So her dad is like the epitome of the 50s ex-military guy. Like tall, broad shoulder, blonde buzz cut. Like... She's showing me in like a rusty colored sweater. Um, he was not a nice guy. Like he was not a nice guy. She was not a nice guy. She, he, he was not a nice guy. Um, and her way of coping with him was to act like him. So. I don't think that she was older than 20. Um, what she's showing me, she's not showing me herself very old at all. She wants to think that she's like 40s, late 30s, powerful, 80s woman, like things like that. But, but 
she's 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 pushing you to do something different um i also would not be surprised if there are a lot of things that are popping up now that popped up for you when you were a kid it was almost like some of the same cycles are coming back around if that makes sense um i would really like to see more than this thing in the hallway I feel like she's stuck in a loop. Okay. Because she keeps showing me that. And usually when I ask about it, um, or when I say, okay, show me something different, either they just stop talking or they do show me something different. But with her, she just backed herself up. Like if I was rewinding a videotape, like, and then did it again, did it again, did it again. So she's stuck in a cycle or you're stuck in a cycle, one or the other, but this is indicative of being stuck in a cycle. Okay. I, I kind of feel like this is somebody that, this is like an older sister. This very well could be the babysitter you were talking about. Um, but this is like, older sister vibe, like mean older sister vibe. Okay. Um, she's not wanting to show me too much. She just wants to show me the, those one things over and over and over. She did show me a uh, like lavender doll dress. I don't know if this is a Barbie dress or what, but she showed me this lavender dress. Um, and it's like, I can hear her coming down the hall. I'm sitting in the floor and I'm playing with this doll or playing Barbies or whatever. And, um, that dress is right there. And I don't know why the dress is important, but that's, that's what she showed me. Does that make sense? Like I said, I don't know why she showed me that in particular, but that's what she showed me. She's getting frustrated with me that I'm not understanding what she's trying to tell me. But I'm like, you're not being very clear about it. Um, does that make sense, Tammy? Because I saw the, oh my God, does that, did that ring a bell? Okay. I, I just want to know if it resonates. I don't need to know anything else about it, but. Um, yeah, it's like a really pretty lavender doll dress. Okay. She doesn't show me if she took it from you, if she gave it to you, she doesn't show me anything about it, but she wanted me to acknowledge that. You have to ask your brother a question though. Okay. Yeah, it's, she's an interesting character. Like she's not very nice. She's, she's not very nice. Um, yeah, she's not very nice. But just know that she is around. And so when you get that kind of like, ugh, you know, those like heebie-jeebie feels down your back. Um, that's probably her. That's probably her. Because she's trying to almost bully you to do something else. Dark hair, usually in a ponytail, usually slicked back. Yeah, like pulled tight in a ponytail. Not black, but a deep chestnut, dark, dark, dark brown. Literally saw herself like the ladies in the um, sledgehammer and addicted to love videos. Like that's how that's how she saw herself. Like the ladies in that painting we we're talking about. So that ring a bell. Okay. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> I figured you meant cat, not car.
Yeah, she's she's around again is what I heard. She's around again to push you to push you with something to break you out of a cycle. We have some interesting people around us. It's not always going to be just, you know, grandma, grandpa, mom, dad that comes through. There's always going to be um, meanly helping is exactly right. There's always going to be people around you that maybe they don't stay around you, but they kind of come in and out and things like that. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah. All right, let's turn that back on. <laughs> All right. Miss Carrie Cobain, you are next, love. Miss Kami, just know that she's she's kind of bullying you a little bit to get you to change, to get you to shift. You are exactly right, Mystic Ma. They all have a purpose. They all have a purpose. So, yeah. All right. Have you down for a channeled read, love? <laughs> no, it's not the best way to help, but sometimes it's the only way that they know how um, because they're stuck in a cycle too. I feel like she's stuck in a cycle um, and this is part of her getting out of it, if that makes sense. I've in doing this for so long, I've run into a lot of beings, a lot of um, spirit guides, etc. that they are exactly the way that they were when they were alive. They are exactly the same way, whether that was nice or mean or whatever. And um, I mean, literally, it's about half and half and then half of them are different. You know, is it always someone who has passed? Yeah. Yeah, when it's when it's a mediumship read, yes, it's someone that's passed. So yeah. Woo! Why do I keep you on it so much? Could be that she's passed and you don't know she's passed. So, yeah. Aww. I love when all the Dr. Spellbomb, whatever people in her. Love it. <laughs> Ugh. All right. That was like Dr. Kodo Love or something like that. Whatever, man. You have one person you're following. Like, no, no. That right there means that you're coming in here to be 50 more blue bodies. <laughs> All right, Carrie. So when I do channeled reads, they're a little different because a lot of times they are they are symbols, they are stuffed animals, they are animals in general, numbers, colors, whatever. Um, and sometimes it's it's a whole thing. So so yeah. Sometimes you have some homework. Let me just say, let me start off by saying this, Carrie. If you've been considering learning to do scrying with a black mirror or a black black ball, like an obsidian ball or whatever, um, then you absolutely need to. Because I keep seeing a black crystal ball about that big. So, like softball size. 
I don't know why I keep yawning, but here's the thing, Carrie. The time is right for you to start learning those things or get back to doing them. If you did them and then you stopped doing it, now is the time to get back to that aspect of your spiritual self. It's time to get back to those basics, those things that you used to love to do, those things that you used to do all the time. Um, if you don't have a black crystal ball or an obsidian sphere, I would highly recommend getting one. To be honest, sometimes, especially, I mean, it's not close to Halloween, but especially at, um, you know, fall or whatever, you can find some really pretty ones at the Pagan Superstore, Hobby Lobby. Um, I don't have any in stock right now, or I'd totally push mine. I think I have a purple one left. Um, but here's the thing. You're seeing things on such a deeper level and I think you realize that you're seeing them on such a deeper level, but you don't know how to make that clearer. It's like seeing seeing a photo this size and blowing it up. There we go. That's, that's better. Like seeing some little tiny screenshot thumbnail and then being able to blow it up and really look at all the details of everything. Scrying does stuff in a way that Other forms of divination don't. Scrying will teach you how to channel. Scrying will teach you how to see the things that are, you know, lurking just outside of your brain's braining knowledge. Does that make sense? Um, I'm also going to say that because of seeing the black crystal ball and so on. <laughs> I keep seeing things in black and white. A white teddy bear, a black teddy bear, a yin and a yang, uh, left and right, and like things like that. Like I keep seeing white, black, white, black, white, black. Like how everything is black or white. Everything is black or white. There's no gray in any of that. Um, and so I don't know if you are seeing things in a way that you're taking everything only in black and white, but I don't, actually, I don't think that's the thing. As soon as I said that, I was like, that's, that's, no. You don't need gray right now, okay? There, everything needs to be in black or white, black or white, yes or no, it is or it isn't. Um, there's time for gray later on, but right now with the situation that you're in and the situation going on, you need answers. You need yes or no. Um, you've also hit the end of, you've hit the end of your learning curve for right now. It's just like hitting the end of kindergarten. Now it's time to move to first grade. You need to take a break, you know, a little summer break. Don't think it's going to be long. I think about the time you get used to not throwing yourself into learning. Uh, it's going to smack you in the head again. But that's why you're disconnected. That's why you feel like you can't, you can't see the things you used to. You can't do the things you used to. So now on break, this would be a good time for you to learn to scry. I am also going to say this to um, girl, make your own scrying mirror. Make your own scrying mirror. Uh, you can get really cool little ornate mirrors or not mirrors, but picture frames at, you know, Hobby Lobby or Walmart or wherever. Open up the glass, paint the back of it black. It's a great way to start off with your own scrying mirror without spending a ton of money. Because whatever it is, it's calling you. Um, I wouldn't recommend, this is for anybody, wouldn't recommend using your TV to scry. You can, but I wouldn't recommend it. Um, that's, a, that's a huge black mirror that has a lot of electricity going to it. So um, don't, don't do that. You have one from Dollar Tree? Girl, I would make your own. Um, you've got a really intense gift in there that's been slowly letting its own self out. 
and it's about to really explode. So I don't know if you've been considering taking classes like advanced classes, but you're at the end of that beginner phase. You're at the end of that beginner phase. So be careful what step you take next. There are so many. There are so many. So be careful what step you take next. Um, I don't really feel like there's a wrong step, but you don't want to take a step and go up and then have to come back and go over here. Does that make sense? You don't want to play like, what was that cure? Where you have to go up a couple, then you have to go back down and fix the one you just did. Um, I literally would just step back and take a break for a little bit. Take a vacation from it, you know, kind of do that, step back a little bit and just be yourself for for a week or so and make it come to you, if that makes sense. Because a lot of time our, our spiritual path is right there in front of us and um, it likes to, uh, it likes to, to, hide under the bed or throw itself under the bushes or whatever. So like I said, you're at the end of this learning curve. I'm also just going to say this and end it this way. I was trying to figure out the best way to say it, but not everybody deserves your pity and not everybody, um, not everybody deserves mercy. Some people do need that karma jar. Some people do need that karma working. And sometimes that thing does need to be thrown in a swamp where nobody is ever going to get it. I'm just saying what I'm saying. I'm just going to leave it at that. If that makes sense. And sometimes you just need a little break to make them think that you did something. Yeah. That makes sense, love? You are absolutely welcome. I love your name, by the way. <laughs> You're fixing to rock it forward, and it's just going to be a hang on to your butt. Oh, my nose is itching. Someone is talking about me like crazy. Ugh. All right. Christy Moore, are you ready? <laughs> Thank you, Laura. I appreciate that. literally are just stuck in the fog. You are just stuck in the fog. Because as I'm trying to channel something for you, it's like, oh, I need to turn this way. Oh, I need to turn this way. Oh, I need to go here. Oh, I need to go here. But the thing is like, there's no clear way for you to move forward. Like you are literally stuck. You are literally stuck in the fog. Okay. Um, you know how they say when you are stuck in quicksand not to fight that it'll make you sink faster and then there's that what is it the shadow no whatever the devil's snare or whatever it is in harry potter that you know it's like just relax and and you'll drop through um that's exactly what you need to do 
because by trying to continually cut through the fog, by continually trying to push forward this way or that way or whatever, um, the fog is just going to close in behind you even faster. It's just going to race around you even more, even thicker. So the more you move and the more you try to get out of the fog, the harder the fog rolls in on you. So just stop. Just stop. Don't. In fact, I would sit down on your butt like a stubborn little kid and say, um, I'm not doing anything else. I'm not going anywhere else. I'm going to sit the fuck right here. Y'all didn't see that yawn. That's exactly what I would say. That's exactly what I would say. Because this is why... When you pull cards for yourself, you can't understand them, why your divination tools aren't working. It's why a lot of the things that you normally use to get an answer about anything is not working because you are just stuck in this fog. So I would literally just sit down like a spoiled kid and cross your arms and say, well, then I'm not doing it um, because... Yeah. I don't feel like someone is sending it your way. I feel like it's just a part of your journey right now. Because you are a little stubborn. And in pushing forward and continuing to push forward, it's just making that fog harder. And I'll swear this is like the pot calling the kettle black. Trust me, because every time... All weekend long, my spirit guides, everything has been like, slow down, slow down, slow down, calm down, rest, slow down, slow down. And I've been like, nah, let me just keep going. So sit yourself on your butt before the universe has the opportunity to. Because if you sit yourself on your butt and say, I'm not doing this, I'm done. What the fuck? Why am I yawning for? I slept good last night. Um, just sit down. Cross your arms. Tell the universe you ain't doing it. All right, Miss Christy. All right, Miss Megan. Megan. Megan West. Um, sorry about that. There are two of you there. <laughs> My sorry. I didn't see it. I see the other word right there. Miss Megan West. All right. Ooh, my stomach's growling. You know how when a dog gets older, everybody treats it different. Some people will baby that. Yeah, I'm, I'm hungry. I probably, I need to eat dinner. I haven't, oh yeah, it's 11 o'clock. No wonder my stomach's like, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> my nom, my nom. sorry, you're welcome for that. <laughs> When a dog gets older, everybody treats it different. Some people baby it. And some people are like, ah, just put it down. And some people don't, don't want to look at it anymore. You know what I'm talking about? Well, I had something really slick that I was going to say after that. And then I made the menomena joke in my stomach. And now it just went out of my head. So I'm in, I'm in, I'm a dumbass. Um, Pay attention 
pay attention to who treats that dog, that older dog, in what way. Pay attention to who babies the dog. Pay attention to who is mean to the dog. Pay attention to who ignores the dog. Um, I am positive that you have heard people say that you can always trust an animal's reaction around a person to how that person really is. But not always. Sometimes you have to trust that that person is being real around that animal. Such as when you have an older or disabled dog. I don't know why I'm bringing it up in that way. But. Pay very close attention to the people around you right now. They're all showing their true colors and you should believe them. They are all telling you exactly who they are and you should believe them. Oh, so that's why I'm bringing that up. <laughs> I'm so sorry. For those of you guys on YouTube, she said, my senior dog just got diagnosed with heart failure. I'm so sorry, love. I swear it's harder to lose a dog than it is to lose a, a human sometimes because, like, dogs are so sweet and loving, you know? Mine are staring at me from in there. But everyone around you is showing you who they really are right now, and you should believe them. You should absolutely believe them, okay? Okay. I don't know if this is something you manifested, if this is a working you did or whatever, but they are absolutely showing you who they really are and you should believe them. Take them at face value. Don't give them any room to get anything over on you. Don't give them any room to, you know, flank and get around behind you. You can never have too many protections. Okay. And I'm so sorry that your doggy got diagnosed with that love. I am not looking forward to the day when I lose one of my my two older babies. So <laughs> Zeus is in there like stared at me. I see you, man. They knocked a blanket in the floor so they could sit in the floor on the blanket. You gonna come in here? Stretch. I love him. There he is. <laughs> he's ridiculous. He's he's ridiculous. Um, he's lost a lot of his teeth. So um, yeah, it is absolutely a blanket nest. He's lost a lot of his teeth, and um, so I've been getting him some soft food, and I don't know. He's never had a problem eating around bear, so I don't know why he's doing this, but it's really funny. He, uh, <laughs> every time I move, like, I feed bear in his bowl, and I feed Zeus in his bowl, and then I move in the kitchen, and Zeus is like, oh, God, I've never taken his food away from him. Like, I don't know what he's doing lately. So, yeah, I'm like, dude, you're just being overdramatic. Like, stop it. But then, of course, you know, I'm like, well... Can he just not see me or is he not hearing me or I don't know. I love his little, I love his little butt. <laughs> He's a mess and a half and I, I love his little shit self. So I thought he was going to come in here, but then he decided, no, he's not. He's, he went in the kitchen. He went in the kitchen. All right. Let's see here. Jeff is next. Zeus and Bear are both 12. In fact, at, oh, wow. Zeus will be 13 in June. In June. And um, no, in... I got him in June. So May or April. He's almost 13. And then Bear will be 13 in the fall. So, yeah. Yep. 
they are older babies. They're older babies because we got them in uh, 2011. So, yeah. I've almost lost Bear once. So, actually, I've almost lost Zeus once, too. So, yeah. So, yeah. All right. Ready, Jeff? Fur babies are life. They absolutely are. Is Jeff still here or did he did he crash? Oh, that's so funny. I looked up and my uh my computer clock says uh one 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 three. There he is. Okay, I didn't know if you if you had crashed for the night or not. So I I don't understand the first thing that I saw with this lady. Um, it's like one of the old school like 1957 Chevys, but it is like pink and maroon. Does that make sense? Like I've seen ones like this where they're like a really dusty pale pink and then they have like the maroon parts on them. Um, but that's the first thing she showed me. And I, I would say it's it's got to be a Chevy. It's got the beautiful round headlights. But um, why do I feel like the car has a name similar to hers? That is so funny. Um, or she calls the car. You call the car her name or something. What is this? What is her connection to the car? Okay. What is your connection to the car? Keeps making Stephen King movie references. It's really funny. From from the movie Christine. Um, okay, so I don't feel like this is somebody that's related to you. I feel like this was a, a friend. This is a woman, but I feel like this is a friend. She's showing me... She's showing me a red-headed lady, but this isn't her. She's concerned about this particular person. So she's... So what she's doing is like shining a light on this person. Um, this lady has like... I would say mid, mid shoulder, mid back length red hair. Not, not the auburn red, but not quite orangey like... The pretty red. Let's just say that. The pretty red. Um, and she's concerned about something going on with her. That. E she's worried about you getting too involved in this situation. Um, I get the feeling that she. Not the redhead lady. But the lady that's showed me the car and is talking about the redhead lady. Um, I'm going to be nice, okay? Like, maybe she nags a little bit. Maybe she's a little overbearing. Um, there's some overprotective aspect here, but at the same time, it's like nobody's good enough. Nobody's good enough. Nobody's good enough. Nobody's good enough. She showed me pickles. Like, they look like the ones my mom used to can a long time ago. Like, actual pickle pickles. Like, homemade pickles. <laughs> then she showed me vanilla ice cream. Lots of vanilla ice cream. Not together. Although those things actually do taste really good together, but not together. So she's showing me a house, but she doesn't, um, she doesn't want to let me inside. She doesn't want anybody inside. She doesn't want to open the door. She is mad at herself for not being here. <laughs> she is literally mad at herself for not being here.
she's showing me uh, like I'm standing looking up at this porch um, and it's all it's like a wraparound porch like it stops over here it goes this way it goes around that way and I can't see that way but like I can see the steps and the door and then I can see the driveway over here but she's not letting me up on the porch she doesn't want anybody on the porch she doesn't want anybody in the house um, it's just like you stay out there like I've got I've got all of the COVIDs or something. Um, does that make sense? I, I don't, I, I mean, I don't feel like it's a threatening thing. I don't feel like she's angry. I don't feel like anything like that. Just nobody's allowed in the house. She doesn't want anybody in the house. Um, I knew it was coming. So I was like, let me pause. I knew it was coming. She really likes pink, like that dusty pink color. Because pink and maroon, pink and maroon, pink and maroon. Okay. I keep trying to I keep trying to get an idea of what she looks like. And I have a feeling that this is a this was maybe a private joke because Every time I try to look and see what she looks like, she wants to show me as this withered old lady with the puffball hair, like, ah. So I don't know if she was always joking or angry about getting older. I don't know what it is, but it's funny because in no way do I think that that's, that's who she was. But she thinks it's funny, so that's what she's showing me. Or it was a, like a private joke between the two of you or something she always joked about. What the fuck is the dusty pink? She keeps showing me the dusty pink color. I don't know if this is like her favorite color, if this is the color of her casket, if this, I don't know what this is, but it's like a dusty pink. And she's showing me everything is fucking dusty pink. The house is dusty pink. The driveway is dusty pink. The curtains are dusty. Like everything is dusty pink. And I don't understand. I don't understand. Like, it's not a favorite color of mine. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't understand why I'm seeing it. Um, but I, I feel like I'm just standing there looking up the stairs. Like I'm just standing there looking upstairs to the house. I'm not allowed to go in. Um, does any of this ring a bell, Jeff? Or does it resonate any of it? Because I kind of get this feeling that, um, I mean, it, it could be a relative. I don't know. Um, she just wants me to warn you about the redhead, like to not get into that situation too deep. She, she is not the redhead. Um, I don't know. The the pink. She keeps showing me the damn pink. So, it's obviously someone you knew enough to, for her to show me that house. It's obviously someone that you knew enough for her to show me the car and that inside joke and, and things like that. Um... I really don't think she liked getting older. I really don't think she liked getting older. And I think that she bitched about it all the time because she does not want to show me what she looks like. And and that's okay. I get it. Which tells me that she's a little bit, she was a little bit vain. She probably never left the house without her face on, her hair put together, her clothes put together. Um, I have a feeling it probably would have horrified her if she did leave the house without, without her face on. Um, So she also is that lady that um, when she wanted to talk, she would talk, 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 like talk your ear off. And when she didn't want to talk, like there was nothing. There was no communication at all. She didn't want to talk to you. She wasn't talking to you. She showed me like really dark purple, but I don't know what it is she's showing me yet. It's some kind of material, but...
it's like I'm looking down on it. I don't, it's not a couch, it's not a tablecloth, but it's a really deep, deep royal purple. And I can see like a swatch of it like this and I'm looking down on it. So I don't know if she sewed, if she was a seamstress, but it's almost like her favorite color. You know what I mean? Um, I have a feeling that I'm looking at a sewing machine and that's, that's why there's only a swatch of color. I have a feeling that she was definitely a little older when she passed away. She is kind of funny. So when I said I have a feeling that she's older when she passed away, she showed me those like the big glasses like this. You know, that uh, the ones that wrapped all the way around your whole head, your face, the the ones they used, like all the old people used to wear. I know my grandparents had them, um, like, yeah. Like they would cover your glasses, glasses, big old square of box on your face. She showed me those. That's funny. That's funny. Does, um, does any of this resonate, Jeff? Do you know who this is? A blue blocker. I mean, yep. Is that what the, is that what they were called? That sounds about right. I'm waiting to see what Jeff says before I go too much further. Trying to learn to shuffle this way because I guess I, I left-handed shuffle. She apologized for never getting... So, do you know who this is? I don't understand. Do you understand the dusty pink color? She keeps showing it to me. Okay. So do you understand whatever the pink is? Okay. So her house was pink. Okay. Okay. So I was like, surely not everything you own is pink, but I mean, like I can see it. Okay. Um, is that the porch that I'm seeing? The wraparound porch? Because, I mean, like, I'm just sitting there staring up at the porch. I'm not allowed on her porch. She, she still doesn't want to show me what she looks like. Um, and that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Um... She wants me to acknowledge that there's like a little weird twinge right here in your gut when somebody, when you don't trust somebody. Um, and it's not like everybody feels, oh, my gut feeling says, no, this is like a physical pinch um, in your gut when you don't like somebody, when you don't trust somebody. She wants me to acknowledge that. Um, I don't, I don't know if it's been happening more lately or what, but she wants me to acknowledge it. And she doesn't want to let me know if that's her or or what it is, but she just wants me to acknowledge. Um, oh Lord, a completely pink house. Mm, mm, mm. That's too much. Um, she really doesn't like this redhead. <laughs> she really does not like this redhead. I don't know what it is, but she doesn't like this redhead. Um, she's really worried that this, this redhead is going to, is going to take you for a ride or something like she's, she's worried about it just so you know. So just be careful because you know, I might know a girl who knows a girl. I'm just saying, and we all love you here. So, you know, 
There might be a whole slew of witches putting somebody in a jar if they fuck you over. Just say what I'm saying. But it's funny. There's still like a barrier there. Um, she doesn't know how to talk to you. She doesn't know how to communicate. She doesn't know how to talk to you. I don't know if that's because of the barrier that was there when she was alive or what, but she doesn't, she doesn't know how to talk to you. Um, she wants to, she wants to, but she doesn't know what there is to talk about. Um, so I would give her that opening. Um, I would give her that opening to talk to you or just sit in a park with you in a dream. You know what I mean? I think that would probably be the best thing. There's a lot of... There's a lot of resentment on her part, not at you, but at two other guys. Um, one is younger and one, I don't know if this is husband or whatever, but this the other one's about a little older than her just by a couple years. Um, but the younger one is still around. Like there's a lot of resentment from her to those two. The younger one, she's showing me um, white shirt, khaki pants, dark hair, wears a bow tie a lot. Um, he still has pretty thick dark hair, but... Uh, she has so much resentment toward him. It's not even funny. It is not even funny. It's not even funny. So I don't know if they kept her away from people. If they kept her away from you. If they kept her whatever. She's. She's kind of seeing the. Um the reality of things. And I'm going to say this, whoever the younger guy is, I think that the older guy has already passed away. Whoever the younger guy is, um, she doesn't visit him and she's not going to, she's not going to visit him. Like she's extremely stubborn. She's extremely stubborn. Like if she says she wasn't doing something, the world would end and she would still never do that thing. Even if, even if it would save the world, say if she was supposed to walk down the hallway and they, somebody said, I will absolutely end the world. If you don't walk down the hallway, she, if she didn't want to walk down the hallway, she wasn't walking down the hallway. She ain't walking down the hallway. So does that make sense, Jeff? Um, she is open to talking. It's just going to be uh, teaching her how to communicate with you. So, yeah. She wants me to acknowledge the last person you expected. That's funny. She, wa she wants me to acknowledge one more time the guy, the younger guy with the dark hair. Um, I have a feeling that uh, you may hear from him because she's She's expecting you to hear from him. Just so you know. Just so you know. So, yeah. Sometimes it's it's weird who decides to come through and chat and talk. <laughs> and then sometimes it's the person you want to hear from the most. And then sometimes, yeah. It's like, oh, I haven't thought about that person in a long time. Like with Kami's reading. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome, my friend. All right. I have Melanie, Alicia, Chelsea, Megan, Shri, Becca, and Ginger. And then Danielle gifted, gifted a read. But I am going to go eat. I'm going to get off here and go eat. Um, 
I'll be live tomorrow from the shop and we're gonna finish these at the shop because the reason that I didn't pick anybody for that gifted read is because I feel like this is somebody that uh, is on tomorrow. Do I help people help those spirits that can't rest move on? Um, you know, that's not really something I've ever done. I got asked that this weekend too. And it's, it's not really something I've ever done. Um, so I probably would defer that to somebody else who, who has done that. I'm not saying I couldn't or I wouldn't try, but it's just not, it's not something I've ever wanted to do. Does that make sense? I've never really wanted to, I've not wanted to do it. Um, so yeah. Yeah, it's not something I've ever wanted to do. So yeah. And to be honest, <sighs> I knew I was going to yawn again. To be honest, I think that there are, there are way more rules involved whenever um, it comes to making a, a being, an entity or whatever actually move on and I mean, if you look at places like the, the Crescent Hotel in Eureka Springs, they've had so many people come in there saying they're going to make this ghost leave or that ghost leave or whatever, and, and no one has. That ghost is still there. Like, they're still seeing that ghost. Like, um, the, the guy on the second floor, Michael, is a perfect example that all these people go and they want to stay in his room and they want to make him leave, and they're like, oh, we're going to get... No, he's still there. He's still there. I've been going to that hotel ever since I was like six. My stomach is growling. Ever since I was like six. And uh, I'm 47 at this point. Oh my God, it's 40 years. <laughs> it's 40 years. And yeah. So to be honest, um, to be honest, I think that I'm not really sure you can force an entity or a being or a ghost or somebody who's passed over to leave. I really don't think you can. I think they have to be ready to go. You can open the door. You can show them how to get there and so on. But I think that um, personally, just from my own experiences, um, I don't think you can force anything to do anything. It's just like forcing somebody that's passed away to speak to you. You can't. Um, sometimes they're not ready. Sometimes they just physically can't there's something that's stopping them it's just like in real life you can't force a person to do shit you cannot force a person to do shit so yeah i don't think you can force anybody to do anything so yeah so with that i'm going to close youtube up here and i'll see you guys there on youtube tomorrow